Fadila I'm Devinta And I'm Emma In this video, we are going to explain about emerging market economy Let's check it out! Check it out! So now, our group are going to show you about the basic of emerging market economy An emerging market economy is defined as nation that has low to middle per capita income Try and change me and I feel sorry for the look on your face So I stay Okay, what EMS looks like? EMS are characterized as transitional Meaning they are in the process of moving from a closed economy to an open market economy While building accountability within the system As an emerging market, a country is embarking on an economic reform program that will lead to stronger as well as efficiency in the capital market. But there are a few numbers of risks that investors should be aware before investing in these countries. The first is foreign exchange rate risk. The second is non-normal distribution. The third is lax insider trading restriction. The fourth is less liquidity. And then next is difficulty raising capital. And then there are there is poor corporate governance governance system. And then next there is increased chance of bankruptcy. And then last is political risk. Standing in a crowded room and I emerging markets. You've probably heard the term before, but do you really know what constitutes an emerging market? Is China an emerging market with its massive population, prominent currency, and large GDP? What about Poland or Indonesia? Well, actually, all of these countries are typically considered emerging market economies, despite the seemingly enormous disparity among them. Let's explain. A general definition of an emerging market economy is that of a nation, when compared to an established economy like the U.S., experiencing improved living standards, increased social and economic stability, a presence of financial markets, and unified currencies, integrating the country more deeply into the global economy. Why are these changes important? One reason is these nations want to build confidence in their economies and among their people. Stable economies encourage foreign investment and keep local investors from sending capital abroad, spurring further growth. So while China and Poland seem completely different from each other in terms of population and GDP, they are both in some process of getting their economies to emerge on the global scene, in one or several of the ways mentioned. Contrast these economies with those of the US, Germany, or Japan, where robust market structures exist, citizens have high living standards, and currencies are more stable. So how do emerging market economies relate to investing? As the economies of emerging market countries and their companies strengthen, their unlocked potential for growth may attract equity and bond investors. Because of this potential growth, the returns of emerging market investments may be higher than those of more established markets. Investing in emerging markets may present significant risks. Remember, these economies are emerging, so investments in them are still subject to wide swings in value due to factors such as political instability, regulatory changes, and volatile currencies. Emerging market investments can also provide portfolio diversification, not just among asset classes and security types, but among different economies that may not move in tandem with developed countries. Investing in emerging markets can be done through ETFs and certain mutual funds, with each focused on a particular geographical region or group of countries based on certain criteria, such as GDP. ETFs and mutual funds, as well as many other investment products, can be purchased at Zions Direct. The last is the conclusion of emerging market economics. Although emerging economics may be able to look forward to brighter opportunities and offer new areas of investment for foreign and developed economy. Local officials in EMEs need to consider the effects of an open economy on citizens. Furthermore, investors 
need to determine the risk when considering investing in an EME. The process of emergence may be difficult, so and often stagnant at times. And even though emerging markets have survived global and local challenges in the past, they had to overcome some large of obstacle to do so. For the first time in history, less than 10% of the world's population lives in extreme poverty. 25 years ago, it was over a third. Emerging markets are still home to most of the world's poor, but the pace of change has been breathtaking. And that's important to remember after a year of falling trade volumes, depressed commodity prices, and political instability. Logistics industry executives are braced for more volatility in 2016. Their biggest concerns? Slumping oil prices? and a slowing of the world's second largest economy, China. China is a leading investor in emerging markets and buys minerals and metals from Latin America and Africa, energy from the Middle East and Russia. While other Asian countries make parts for goods that are assembled or finished in China, then exported. Logistic executives are upbeat about India. It has taken initial steps to simplify taxes, cut regulations, and reform key parts of its economy. They see it as the emerging market with the most potential, edging out China. The United Arab Emirates is another bright spot, with the best business climate, infrastructure, and transport connections. In Agility's Logistics Index, it ranked number two overall, just behind China. Iran is the world's last big closed-off economy, and following agreement to freeze its nuclear program, it is slowly opening up as sanctions are lifted. Brazil fell into recession in 2015. Executives say it's still an appealing logistics market, but they are concerned about poor governance, government debt, and corruption. Indeed, when they look at Latin America as a whole, they see corruption as the biggest threat to growth. In Asia, their big worry is an economic shock, especially in China. The threat in the Middle East and North Africa? Political turmoil. In Africa, it's bad infrastructure. And for the first time, logistics industry executives see consumer spending by Africa's growing middle class as more important than mineral and resource demand, and view Nigeria and South Africa as the markets with the most potential. Overall, experts disagree on the prospects for emerging markets in 2016. The International Monetary Fund says they will grow at a relatively healthy 4.7%, while JP Morgan opts for a more modest 3.6%. What do you think? <laughs>